<laughs> oh boy, I do li love shooting these old Winchesters. Welcome to the Cinnabar. Now today we've got what's going to be a kind of a different episode for you. See, today for the first time we're going to invite you into our inner sanctum to look over part of our own personal collection. And if this episode's popular, well, maybe we'll come back and take a look at some of the rest of it. So stick around, let's head on down to the vault and have a look. Now we've had a lot of people over the years ask to poke their nose in our safes and, and look at our personal collection. I've always kind of hesitated about that. But today we're going to do just that. Now, for those of you who watch the, the channel regularly, you know that I have a fondness for all Lever Action Winchesters, but a particular fondness for the 1895 models. My lovely bride, of course, is a Colt collector and, and has a, a, a particular interest in the Colt Lightning Rifles. Now, over the past few years, I've sold off a, a fair number of my 1895s in order to finance gunsmithing school and gunsmithing equipment and I've tried to diversify my Winchester collection a little bit. So before I uh, pare down that 95 collection much further, I thought it would be a good idea to maybe go through the safe and just show you what I've held on to, what I think are the more interesting 1895s that I've collected over the years. So stick around if you're, if you're a fan of Winchester lever actions and particularly 95s, this ought to be a pretty interesting one. Okay, so let's take a peek inside our shrine to the Model 1895. Now you'll notice as we go through these that they're not all a bunch of safe queens. You know, some of these guns got carried quite a little bit. Uh, some are actually some projects that hopefully we'll get to and, and show on the channel at, at some point in the future. But nearly every 1895 in this safe has something special about it. And the reason that, that I kept on to it when I or held on to it while I sold off some of the other 95s. Now generally we have our deluxe models over in this rack, uh, our early model flat sides over here except for this first one out front, and then the middle rack is, is special order barrels and muskets in the back. Let's start off with these deluxe models. Now this first one here is a 30-03. This is a, a real nice high condition 30-03. Of course that's the short-lived precursor to the 30-06, but there was a fair amount of, of 1895s chambered in 30-03, and, and surprisingly, even well after the introduction of the 30-06. And speak of the devil, here's our 30-06, our and of course this is one that got hunted a lot. Of course, I'm a huge fan of the 30-06, so I can understand why if, if uh, it had one back in the day that this would have been a hunting rifle that got carried a lot. It's got a great bore, it's a good shooter, has the Model 21 receiver sight, which is a, a real plus, and this one's a takedown as well. You know, takedowns in this day and age um, aren't, aren't particularly so useful, but if you think about in the 1890s to 1920s of modes of transportation, being able to take that rifle down to pack it to go on a train or, or whatever uh, mode of transportation you had at that time to go hunting was a, a real benefit. Okay, now here's kind of an unusual one. This is the, the least manufactured caliber for 1895s. This one's a 3872, one of the two black powder cartridges that were, were introduced from day one. This is just a dandy. This one's a, a round barrel. And our next one up is the other black powder cartridge the 4072, and this particular one is an octagon barrel. Now, you could only order octagon barrels in the 3872 and the 4072, so there aren't many of them out there because they're, they were the least popular calibers. So you, you rarely see uh, octagon barreled 1895s, and this is the only 4072 deluxe octagon that I've ever seen. Luckily, picked that up at the at the Winchester Arms Collector Association show in Cody a few years ago. Now we have probably my favorite caliber of 1895, the 35 Winchester. This this is a dandy, nice deluxe. You'll notice most all of these are are uh, shotgun butt except for this 4072 that I just showed. And here we go with a short rifle. So this is a, a, a 30 US or 3040 Craig, which the standard length for those was 28 inches. But you could order shorter than standard 
barrel lengths in, in all the calibers. And so this one's a would be considered a short rifle with a 24 inch barrel. This one's also just a four digit serial number, so it's an antique, and that's pretty rare for second model um, 1895s. There just aren't many antique second models out there. Okay, here's one of my absolute favorites in the collection. This is a 22 inch short rifle deluxe. Just absolutely gorgeous wood, and hopefully I don't have too much glare off of it. Um, this is, this is an absolute beauty. 22 inch, everything letters on it. Um, Model 21 receiver sight, sling eyes, um, has a tremendous bore, just hadn't been carried much at all. Now there were only about a little under 300 uh, 22 inch and, um, and about the same number of 24 inch 1895 short rifles in the factory record. So there's not many of them out there. Now we're coming to the big guns, literally. This is a, a 405 Deluxe Model 21 receiver sight. This is one that got carried some, so it didn't have British proof marks, so maybe it didn't go to uh, Africa, but certainly the kind of configuration it did, and of course that's the kind of uh, rifle that, that Teddy Roosevelt and his son Kermit took to, to Africa on their safari. This one is very unusual in that it has a factory installed Silver's recoil pad. That's a, a very rare option. And another 405. This one uh, is a project as, as well. Um, this one's actually in George Mattis's Winchester book, but it's had quite a bit of cold bluing over some pitting that didn't get polished out. The wood's in wonderful shape, so this will this will be a fun project one of these days. We'll we'll get it in the shop and and polish it out properly and and get it blued properly as well. I'm really looking forward to that project. Now we've got some some pretty rare carbines. There's not a lot of uh, deluxe carbines out there and this one is one that's obviously somebody hunted with quite a little bit. This is a, a 30 US uh, deluxe carbine. Beautiful, beautiful wood. Uh, just, a, just a dandy. I can see why somebody back in the day carried that. And another one here. Now that one's missing the handguard. This one actually has a handguard and it has figure in the handguard. Uh, this one again is another with an absolutely beautiful buttstock. Um, complete and, and in original condition. Again it's another one that got carried a lot. Now here's a carbine that didn't get carried at all. This is a as close as you can get to a a unfired Winchester and of course they were all test fired at the factory but this was found in a crate of, of 10 uh, 95 carbines and you can see it does have a little finish loss right here where in the those crates they had a, a wooden divider and it kind of reacted and took a little bit of the finish off but this this gun's extremely valuable to me when I'm restoring Winchesters because I can reference this one and see just exactly how they were polished the direction of the polish um, the the way the stocks are finished and the absolute correct color that, that the stocks should be. So th for me this is just a tremendous reference. So here's another quick look at these Deluxe 1895s before we squirrel them back away in the safe. Okay now we'll get into some special order barrels. Now as I mentioned earlier that we could only get the, uh, octagon and half octagon barrels in the 38, 72, and 40, 72 calibers. The, the same is true for extra length barrels. Very similar to the 1894s, which they, they were only available in the two early black powder cartridges with extra length barrels in 38, 55, and, and uh, 32, 40. Um, not really sure what the reasoning was for that, but that's, that's kind of how it is. I'd love to hear if somebody has a, an explanation. Uh, anyway, so this first one up here is a very rare uh, 3872 with a 32 inch round barrel. This, this particular one has been carried quite a little bit. Um, I've shot it. It shoots very, very well. It's also a little unusual in that it has a sporting leaf rear sight. That's a, an unusual option on an 1895 very common on the 76's and on the 86's. This one also has a, a beaches or globe front sight as well. 
And our next one is doubly rare in that it is a half octagon. Now according to Cassip and Dunbar's wonderful book on the 1895s, there was only I think 72 uh, half octagon 1895s made. Uh, this one's a 30 inch and I think there were 91. Now I could have those numbers mixed up and backwards but anyway there weren't very many half octagon or 30 inch barreled and, and this one is both. That one is in 4072, if I didn't mention that. Now we've got a couple of just two inch over length 4072s. This one, uh, a round barrel, uh, in, in just excellent, excellent high condition. Uh, this one's pictured in Cassab and Dunbar's book, as a matter of fact. Uh, has a Model 21 receiver side, globe front sight, so you line up the two uh, circles. Uh, makes a wonderful sight picture. So that one's a, a 28 inch and of course the the black powder cartridges the 3872 and 4072 were standard with a 26 inch barrel so that one's a, a 28 instead so it's two inches extra. This is a standard length this one's a 4072 but it's a half octagon of course that's a, a, a very rare option with 95's so a 4072 with a 26 inch standard length barrel and now uh, another 4072, and this one's a, a dandy as well. Has some nice figure in the in the butt stock here. Um, 28 inch, two two inches extra long, and it's another with a very rare sporting leaf rear sight. This is a, a dandy rifle, one of my favorites. Has a spectacular bore too. Okay, now here's one. This isn't a special order barrel, but a special order pistol grip. Now there are very few 95's made with pistol grips. About 300 of them in the factory record uh, but they're all flat side first models except this one. This one came out of the Winchester collection was a prototype a very early serial number for a second model 5175 I believe is the serial number so when they were first making uh, second models they made this one with a pistol grip and the the note card that came with it out of the factory um, collection said that they decided not to make them on account of the cost of bending this finger lever to make the that pistol grip now they did make on special order I believe Mattis said four with a straight grip with the wood pistol grip that kind of um, was made around the the uh, finger lever but this is the only one with a, a true pistol grip stock second model. Okay now we're into some muskets. Now first off we're, we're, we'll look at a, a 30-06 this um, NRA musket. This configuration they made both uh, 30-03 and 30-06 for these NRA muskets. These were for match competitions, NRA match competitions. They're kind of a an unusual one and that the the rear sight was put clear at the back of the barrel here rather than up in the middle of the handguard just to get a, a better sight radius with this 24 inch barrel and then there's a very rare variant of the NRA musket that was a 3040 Craig and it actually is the only 1895 that came standard with a 30 inch barrel this one unfortunately has a 28 inch barrel on it. This is a, another project gun. This one letters very unusual in that it letters as an NRA musket 30 caliber and a deluxe checkered shotgun butt. And, and it, was, it went to Russ, Russ Leander who was the, um, the guy that did the, the special guns, oil finish. Um, it's been poorly refinished but one of these days we'll get it in the shop and, and match this thing up with the factory record the way it should be. That's a gun that deserves to be restored. Okay, now we're into military muskets. This first one is a Colorado National Guard musket. Most of these National Guard muskets of course got used pretty hard as, as this one did. Um, quite a history with these, these Colorado National Guard muskets uh, used by some of the National Guard on some um, kind of a dark time in Colorado's history with some minor strikes and some violence that took place. 
This one actually is a Kentucky National Guard musket. Actually, I'm wrong. This one's a U.S. musket. So this one was a, a U.S. contract musket. In, in the late 1890s, um, the U.S. government ordered 10,000 of these. Uh, they they uh, sent 100 of them, I think it was, over to the Philippines. They didn't get a good review from the folks that tested them out over there, so they, they excessed them off. Most of them ended up going to South America, Cuba, I think, actually, Central America, uh, the Caribbean, and got used hard like this one is. And now we're to this Kentucky National Guard musket. Now this one I only found out about because of the research that Cassab and Dunbar did at the Cody Firearms Museum and uncovered the orders for these Kentucky National Guard muskets. So you, you really have to find those by, by the serial number and, it, and that, that information is available in the 1895 book because they have no markings on them. The Colorado National Guard muskets are marked down the receiver Colorado National Guard, but there is no special markings on these Kentucky National Guard muskets. And then, of course, our final musket, military musket, is our Russian musket. I think most people, if you're into lever actions, you're into Winchesters, you're into military surplus rifles, you know about the, the Russian muskets. And this one's one of the, the very highest condition ones that, that you'll find because most of them got just absolutely used up. Um, in in the war in Europe and usually in more than one war in Europe and then just as a, an accent we have alongside where the muskets are both a, a early 8 inch bayonet and scabbard and the later 16 inch bayonet and scabbard and here's another brief look at this group of 95's before they go back in the safe Now this next rifle I saved purely as a hunting rifle. This is a, a pretty nice, just standard model, 1895, model 21 receiver sight in 35 WCF. Now as I mentioned earlier, I think the 35 WCF is an excellent big game hunting caliber. And uh, it can be loaded up or down to hunt any North American big game. Now it's basically just a uh, 405 neck down to 35 caliber. So it's a very, very potent round when it's loaded to full strength. So if you, uh, your only experience shooting a, an 1895 is shooting a full powered 35 caliber or 405 caliber, uh, you might think that, oh boy, I don't want to shoot 95s, they kick like a mule. But the reality is that the other cartridges are, are much more mild and pleasant to shoot. Now you'll notice that this is, being a second model has a, a stepped receiver here. And the rest of the, the rifles in this rack here are the early flat side varieties and don't have that stepped receiver. Look more like you, you are accustomed to seeing with the other Winchester models with this flat side to the receiver here. Now this particular one is, is a rare model in that it's not only an octagon barrel but a 30 inch. So it's an octagon extra length. So by necessity it would have to be one of the black powder rounds or cartridges and this one is, it's a 3872. It's an excellent shooting rifle by the way. Now we want to talk about rare. Here's a 36 inch Octagon 1895. Now there are only six of them in the factory records and only two are known to survive. This one and a, a, this one, a 3872 and there's another uh, 4072 second model half octagon the only two that that survive today that we know of um, and a lot of these these very long barreled rifles um, back in the day people decided they didn't need all that length and, and cut them back so it's very common so this one of course is extremely rare it's the only 36 inch known that's a 3872 the only flat side the other one is a is a second model and the only full octagon barrel. So one of one configuration that we know of and, and most likely it is the only one of its kind. Okay, so now we'll get into a, a couple more deluxes that uh, are over here on the, on the flat side rack. This one, a 3040 Craig, beautiful 
beautiful stock. Um, this is a gun that's, that's been hunted some. In fact, if you watch a video, I think it's, a, it's probably a couple years old now, I, I killed a, a, a nice buck here on the ranch with this particular rifle. And another looks just about like it with a, a pistol grip butt and a beautiful, beautiful wood. This one's been used really hard. Uh, this is another project for us. We've, it's got several issues that, that need to be taken care of and it, it's been really rusty at some point and all the, the uh, finish has been removed. It's got a couple extra holes here on the upper tang. Um, so this is going to be quite a project for us and, and uh, really looking forward to it. Now these pistol grips, um, 1895s as I mentioned earlier, there were a, a, about 300 of them in the factory record of these flat sides. Um, we've got I think four of them here of the first models and then that one prototype second model. So very, very unusual to, to see the, the pistol grip 1895s. This is another one that's a really dandy condition. I think we've got a little bit of a um, blood that, that took some of the finish off across the receiver here, if you can see that. But other than that, in really nice condition. Unfortunately, somebody a lot taller than me put a, an extension on this buttstock. So this that's something that I'm working on finding a, a suitable stock that I'll have to, mo to uh, make it into a pistol grip. Nobody, of course, reproduces pistol grip stocks, semi inlet so we'll have to make a stock from scratch for this particular rifle. And of course that one is a, a plain pistol grip, eye pattern checkered. And here's a, another one the same way. This one's actually in uh, George Mattis's Winchester Book 2. Um, this one's a 303 British. And that's very unusual. They just, just started making 303 British at the transition from first model to second model. And if, if I've got my information right, there's only four of them four flat sides that that letter as 303 British. Now this, interestingly enough, is the very last known flat side highest serial number at 5253. And it's had a broken stock, so we're going to have to make a new stock for it too. And somebody, instead of pinning it properly, uh, just drilled through and put a, a plastic pin through it. Alright, so next up we've just, we've got a a very high condition, nice flat side 4072 octagon barrel. And then we start getting into low serial numbers. For a while I was on a real kick for picking up low serial numbers. Uh, this particular one is serial number 147. It's been poorly refinished in the past, so it's another of our project guns. It's got a lot of pitting underneath and, and old reblue. Uh, so we'll polish this thing back up and, and uh, blew it properly. Should be a, a very enjoyable project. And then next we have a, another octagon barrel 3872. This one, another low serial number, is serial number 64. Um, an excellent condition. It has had some work to the barrel. It does have an R&R &R or repair and, and refinish on, on the factory letter. So it went back in about 1914 for I would presume a, a replacement barrel. Unfortunately, the, the factory letters or the factory records don't show what repairs were made, but because we know that's a, a later barrel, um, I'm, I'm making the leap that that's probably what happened at that time. Now this one is a, an interesting old gun. It's been road hard and put away wet. This one's serial number 29, and it's got a, a brand on the on the fore end here, this came off a big ranch down in, in southern Nevada. Uh, it's it's a, a, an interesting one just because it's an old, old ranch gun that I'm sure has a tremendous story to tell if it could talk. 3040 Craig that one is. It's had the barrel shortened as well. And then another really interesting 95 last but not least this is another one that came out of the Winchester collection and when we're talking about early serial numbers this has a mole trump because this one doesn't have a serial number this is one of the original factory prototype guns that, that came out of the Winchester collection and then in the records for the for the Winchester reference collection it mentions the 
uh, color case hardened lever and I believe that this was probably a prototype where they were, were tested out the color case hardening process on the 95 leather levers because this is the only one that we know of that had a color case hardened lever even there's four or five um, with color case hardened receivers but they have blued levers now at that time all the models had color case hardened levers so I think they were they were anticipating doing the same things with 95's and for whatever reason they, they made this particular one and then decided to blue the rest of the levers so this again before they even went into production and of course even the the butt plate on this one has some excellent case colors on it hopefully you can see that without too much glare okay so that one that one finishes off our tour of the 1895's and here's a group shot of the flat sides before they head back to the gun safe. Well, thanks for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And remember, if you're interested in Winchesters, the very best thing you can do is join the Winchester Arms Collectors Association. Just a great group of people and some tremendous resources there as far as information on Winchesters. And if you're into 95s in particular, get a copy of that Cassavan Dunbar 1895 book. They're out of print now and a little hard to find, but well worth the search. Now, if you enjoyed the, uh, this type of episode, well, drop us a line, let us know. Maybe we can go back one of these days and, and uh, take a look at some of the rest of the collection. Until next time, happy trails from the Cinnabar. <laughs>